نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتا من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعن لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم الہمنا رشتا و عزنا من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارنا الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباعا اللہم ارنا الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہو Today So how will it be when we bring from every nation a witness And we bring you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, against these people. These people means what? The Muslims, the followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam against these people as a witness. In verse 41 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah is briefly narrating the concept of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being a witness for his followers on the day of judgment. The day of judgment, yawm al-qiyamah, the day of resurrection, yawm al-hisab, yawm al-haq, yawm al-taghabun. It's been called by so many names in Quran. It will be a day of hardships. People will be saying, Haza yawmun usar. This is a day of hardships. Even the prophets, even the prophets will be calling out, Nafsi, Nafsi, O oh, our souls, O oh, our souls. And people will be talking amongst themselves and they will be trying to find prophets or other people around them who will be interceding for them for their release from the hellfire. There is a very lengthy and an elaborate hadith of the Prophet wasallam, which Abu Huraira anhu narrates in Bukhari that Prophet wasallam said, On the day of resurrection, I will be the chief. Do you know why? On the day of judgment, Allah will gather all those who came earlier and later and the sun will come overhead and very close which will cause them to be all upset and anxious and the people will say, let us look for someone who can recommend us to the Lord and the people will be saying, Haza yawmun usar. And so the people will approach first of all to Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. And they will say, O Adam alayhi salam, you are the father of human beings. And you are one whom Allah molded him with his own hands and then blew his soul in you. The angels were ordered to prostrate before you when they did so. Hence, kindly intercede on our behalf. Adam alayhi salam will reply, Today my Lord is an, as angry as he has never been before or will ever be after. Allah had warned me not to go near the forbidden tree, but I defied his orders for which I am worried about myself. So kindly ex- excuse me and you go to someone else. And so they will go to Hazrat Nuh and they will, they will talk to them. Talk to him and they will say you were you were the messenger of Allah and Allah has mentioned about you in the Quran and please recommend our case before Allah you are aware of our condition. As Nuh alayhi salam will also say that he will say that today my Lord is angry as he has never been before or he will be never after. I had prayed for my nation to be cursed and it was destroyed. That is why today I am worried about my fate. Excuse me, and you look for somebody else for the intercession. Then they will go to Hazrat Ibrahim salam, and they'll say, O oh, Ibrahim, you are the Allah's prophet and you were also his friend. 
He has been called as Khalilul Lan. And please recommend us on your behalf. Hazrat Ibrahim A.S. would say, Today my Lord is so angry, he has never been before or after. I had lied three times during my life on earth, so which, for which I am worried about myself. So you find somebody else and then they will come to Hazrat Musa A.S. And they will say, Oh, Hazrat Musa A.S., you are Allah's Prophet. And he also you also have the distinction of being the one Allah talked to. Please intercede on our behalf. And Hazrat Musa A.S. will say, the way my Lord is angry today, he has never, never, never been so before. And I had killed a man, even when I was ordered not to do so. So I am worried about myself. Excuse me and find somebody else. And then they will go to Hazrat Isa A.S. And they will say, you are, you are Allah's prophet and you are the offspring of Maryam and you are the spirit of Allah. You could talk to people while you were still an infant. Today, talk to Allah on our behalf and you are aware of our state. And Isa alayhi salam would say, the, word, the way my Lord is angry today, he has never been like that before. And the Prophet sallam, the narrator says that he made no mention of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam mentioning his sin. But he said that even he would be very restless and he would be very worried about his fate and he would say, nafsi, nafsi. And then they will all come to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then what would happen is narrated in another hadith that Prophet ﷺ said that during the life of all prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awarded and promised them a supplication which will be accepted in their life. And all the prophets supplicated and made prayer and it was accepted. But I left my supplication for the day of the judgment. That is, Prophet ﷺ did not avail of the offer in his worldly life and he left for the day of the judgment. For whom? For whom? Not for Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha who was, who was his dearest wife. Not for Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha whom he said is a part of my body. But for us, for us, for his followers, what will he do? The hadith says that Prophet ﷺ will proceed to the plain of the congregation, that is the Maidane Hashar, and after coming under underneath Allah's throne, he will prostrate. He will prostrate. And then he says, I will prostrate. He said, I will prostrate before my Lord and I will recite the words of his praise that he will put in my heart. And then Allah will say, O Muhammad, Raise your head and ask for it shall be granted to you. And then what will the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Ya Allah, Ummati. O oh Allah, my followers. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I will intercede with Allah and a limit will be drawn from me and I will rescue or help so many people from hellfire and take them to heaven. Then the whole thing will be repeated the second time. And when the Prophet ﷺ will be again promised that you supplicate and your your prayer will be heard, then again Prophet ﷺ will say, Ya Allah Ummati. He will supplicate and people will be taken out from because of his intercession from hell and they will be meant made to enter heaven. And this will be repeated for the third time again. And then finally, Prophet ﷺ will say, O oh Allah, there is no one left in hell except to those who have been detained by the Quran. So this will be the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ on the day of judgment for his followers. But before I proceed, I would want all of us to just think and give yourself a few minutes to just ponder over the fact that Prophet ﷺ on the day of the judgment when he will be promised that pray in you, you will be given what you will ask for, will, will supplicate for whom? For us. Do we realize his love for his followers? Do we realize the love for each one of us? And then ask ourselves, do we love him that much? 
Does our love amount to that level? Do we love his religion? Do we love his teachings? Do we love his hadith? Do we love reading and teaching his hadith? Do we love passing on his hadith and his his religion to others? Do we spend our time, our money, our wealth, our riches to protect his beloved religion? Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka wa amal allazi yuballighuni hubbaka. And then Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with intercede and then another thing he said that i have been promised a river of kosar on the plain of congregation that is in the maidan e hashr and the prophet sallallahu said that i will be standing on the river of kosar and i will be providing water from the river to my followers and the prophet sallallahu said that any person who will drink from the water will never get thirsty again and any person who will be deprived of the water from the river of kasr his thirst will never never ever quench so when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to mention about his intercession and about him giving the water from the river of kasr the sahaba and the companions who were who were actually really desirous of all these things they were really seriously desirous of all these things they used to ask the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they're going to be so many people they're going to be so many many people in the day of the judgment how will you happen to recognize us imagine who was saying that hazrat bilal hazrat usama bin zaid hazrat umar hazrat usman who used to spend their days their nights their mornings their evenings with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they they even felt the desire to ask they asked how will you recognize us the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as reported in a sahih hadith in bukhari he said i shall recognize you how muhajjilina min athar al wudu i shall recognize you due to the shining and due to the glowing parts of the body which you washed with wudu and then you and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam suggested now any one of you who is desirous may increase his glow and increase his noor allahumma ja'al fi qalbi noora and then about this intercession and about recognizing the people on the river of kasr prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a sahih hadith again reported in bukhari that on the day of judgment and on the day of resurrection i will see a few people and i will recognize them as being my followers but then i will notice that they will the angels will be stopping them to come close to me and i will ask the angels why are they being stopped to come close to me and the angels will address and they will tell me that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are not aware that these are the people who after you passed away they fabricated such and such new things in your religion so the people who were involved or who are involved in committing bid'a in bid'a will be deprived of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's recognition his intercession and the water from the river of kausar prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said kullu bid'atin zalala kullu bid'atin zalala and then he also said in a sahih hadith anyone who respects or regards or honors a person committing bidat laisa minna he is not from among us so that is why we actually need to understand and comprehend and then refrain from committing any form of bidah what do we actually mean by bidah bidah is any deed any deed which the person before he he does that deed he has 
he thinks and he plans and he intends that if he does this any worship or anything then he will be rewarded with a greater reward like like some supererogatory worships some supererogatory fasts salah and some charity on some specified days or night there are people who label that if they are done on certain specific days or night they will be rewarded with a greater reward as compared to other things other days so this is bidah when the quran or the hadith or the sunnah does not give any such concept of extra reward regarding those supererogatory worships like for example talking about the worship of certain nights as we see and we clearly learn from the quran and from the hadith worship during the night of laylatul qadr and laylatul qadr being the alternate and odd nights of the last 10 days of the ramazan month of ramadan or the worships on the first 10 days of the month of zilhaj they have been clearly explained in quran and in hadith and also in sunna as being a source of a greater reward similarly but on the other hand no other night other than this making any supererogatory prayers or salah on any other night other than this zilhaj and ramzan nights will hold a greater reward so if done with this intention it will be a bidda similarly fasts we know allah orders the obligatory fasts in the month of ramazan and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to used to fast his supererogatory fasts on every monday and every thursday and the wide days of the month being the 13th and the 14th and the 15th of every month and then the sixth fasts of shawal and then the 9th and the 10th of muharram and then the fasts of the month of shaban and then the fasts of uh, the month the first 10 days or the first 9 days of zilhaj but other than this and beyond this there are no days specified either in quran or in hadith or sunna which have been explained to hold a greater reward for the person who fasts on those days and if a person is fasting on that day with intention and with expectation of a greater reward then this will be a bidah similarly doing charity on certain days and then certain customs or certain ceremonies of death and funerals these are all what these are bidah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah hujurat inshallah will be covering it soon says la tuqaddimu bayna yadi allah wa rasuluhu do not proceed do not go beyond the orders of allah and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah help us understand the concept of bid'a and allah help us remember them and allah help us pass it on to others and allah help us refrain from all forms of bid'a now this is the concept of the bid'a and which will be de- uh, depriving the people of the intercession of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then the next verse verse number 42 allah says that day that day who disbelieved and disobeyed the messenger will wish they could be covered by earth and they will not conceal from allah a single statement rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab subhanak allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin